Welcome back to another episode of Transform Yourself. I am Casey, the Calorie Deficit Queen, and I am a weight loss coach. I specialize in helping women over 40 who need to lose 20 or more pounds. And my husband, Tyler, and I are here to give you practical tips and strategies to make your weight loss journey enjoyable and sustainable. And today we are diving into two strategies that help you make a habit a lifelong habit and something you might actually enjoy doing because when you enjoy doing it, it's sustainable and will become a lifelong habit. So these strategies include temptation bundling and habit stacking. And temptation bundling and habit stacking are kind of a, there's a lot of overlap between the two. I'm imagining in my head, a little devil on one corner. One shoulder and a little angel on the other. Are you? Yeah. Why is that? Tim, well, it's temptation, temptation, and it's like good and bad. Yeah, maybe. Oh, so, uh, so maybe just the word temptation makes you think of like the little devil and the little. Well, angel. temptation, you know, going back to the Bible, <laughs> typically means something not good. <laughs> this I mean, is, okay, k- kind of since okay. the beginning of Western civilization, but. <laughs> tis true. Tis true. So get comfortable or or don't don't get don't. comfortable or don't. Yeah. I'm not your mom, <laughs> right? Or be don't. uncomfortable. I don't yeah. care. Actually, you know what? Be uncomfortable. Yeah. You should be uncomfortable. <laughs> Actually, a little yeah, because I said get comfortable, and I was like, no, maybe you're on a walk, and that's not comfortable to you because it's really hot outside or something. But that's okay because then you can focus on our on our podcast and not have to worry about it. That should so be your hot. new tagline: get uncomfortable. <laughs> because I feel like as Americans, we need to be a little less comfortable. Yeah, I agree with that statement. All right, let's get into this. So first in the lineup of helping you create a habit that is lifelong is temptation bundling. So this strategy is all about pairing something that gives you instant gratification with something that you should be doing, but you're, you might not be doing because it's not as fun. So it's basically combining something you want to do with something you ought to do. So pairing something that gives you instant gratification, like taking a hot bath, watching your favorite TV show, listening to your favorite podcast with something you should be doing that's less fun, like going on a walk or meal prepping is temptation bundling. Again, you're smushing together something you want to do with something you ought to do. Okay. So why does this work? It works because you're going to spend less time on your actual temptations because you're only going to have access to your temptation when you're doing the thing that you ought to be doing. But then you're going to be doing that thing while you're enjoying your temptation. So the thing that you should or ought to be doing is going to start to become more enjoyable. So let me, let me give you, give me a a real example because I'm right. Cause okay. Basically what I'm trying to say is that your should behavior becomes your want behavior. And so for example, um, if you love scrolling social media, which most of my audience does because that's how y'all found me is social media. So I know All of you love to scroll social media. Well, maybe you can set a little temptation bundle. Maybe you're only going to scroll Instagram while you're on a treadmill. If you're going to do that, be careful. Don't don't go too fast and fall off. Um, But or maybe you're going to temptation bundle and you're going to listen to your favorite true crime podcast while you uh, do your meal prep. I don't know about you, but I know that I love the, what, Crime Junkie podcast. It's super popular. And I know that if I only allowed myself to listen and listen to it when I was doing meal prep, I'd more likely I'm like want to do some meal prep because I want to listen to the podcast. Um, so it kind of it helps you make meal prep more enjoyable. So these are examples of temptation bundling. How do you figure out how you want to temptation bundle? If you want to do this, you need to get out a piece of paper, not if you're driving or walking, um, (laughs) and create a kind of a T chart or two columns. And in the first column, you would put 
what you want. What is it you want? I want Mm -hmm. to read my favorite novel. I want to listen to my favorite podcast. I want... Eat Ben and Jerry's. I mean... No, that doesn't doesn't work here. That goes goes against everything we're trying to do. Yeah, we're not talking that kind of temptation. We're talking about a temptation that you want that isn't going to derail your goals. Gotcha. So really, so, I mean, and, I, and I, I honestly, I think temptation is kind of a strong word. Okay. Because it's, what you, it's called temptation bundling. It's Why don't called you call temptation. it ple- pleasure bundling? Although that could have another weird. That might sound weird. Uh, yeah. I'm going to pleasure the, bundle tonight, baby. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and I'm gonna be pissed when I find out. Oh, that means re- listen to Crime Junkie. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Like, no. <laughs> so, so in the first column, you're gonna make a list of the things you want, the things that bring you joy and Think, pleasure. Yeah. Okay. And then in the other column, you're going to make a list of things you should be doing or you ought to be doing. Like, well, the habits you you really need to have that align with your goal yeah that might be meal prepping that might be going on walks that might be journaling that might be those kind of things then what you're going to do is you're going to basically smoosh them together you're going to pair something in your want list with something in your should list yeah it and it's also i mean just specifically a podcast or an audio book or whatever it (laughs) Like, I feel like that's the only time I ever actually get to listen to those because I don't hardly drive. Like today was like the first time I've driven like by myself for quite some time. Yeah. Well, here's the funny thing. I noticed something I noticed about you okay. is you listen to your favorite podcast when you do the laundry. I do. <laughs> I am a lucky lady, y'all. He does like 98% of the laundry in our household. Um, I'm I'm okay with saying that because you do. Um, and it's... It's really nice, but you listen to your favorite podcast every time you're doing laundry, so I, I think that makes it a little more enjoyable. For yeah, because otherwise it is literally torture. <laughs> so you're it is pairing, indentured servitude. So you were temptation bundling. You were pairing I didn't something even know. you want to do with something you ought to do, right? It makes sense. It makes it more enjoyable. All right. So and the same thing, like for example, you know, maybe you have your very favorite TV show that you watch, and maybe you could get your little walking pad and put it in a place where you can walk on your walking pad while you're watching that TV show. And you could do, I mean, that's no, that's a great point. And I was going to go a slightly different direction of put on your favorite, whatever YouTube or whatever. And you could do stretching or Pilates or just some basic movements to kind of just move, get limber, stretch. And you can do that you know, you don't have to break a, you don't have, you could break a sweat, but you don't have to even break a sweat, um, to get some movement in and, and get, get any a little, benefit in. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Instead of just sitting like a potato. So studies have shown that temptation bundling works because it leverages the power of immediate rewards to mo- to motivate us to complete less enjoyable tasks. And by combining the activities, you're more likely to stick to your healthy habits because you're looking forward to the reward that you get from the thing that you want. Make sense? It, I mean, honestly, kind of feels like it's the same thing. What feels like the same thing? Habit stacking and... It's a little different. Okay. So we're going to... Like, explain the nuance. They're very similar, which is why we put both of these in the same podcast. Yeah. So the next one is habit stacking and... This is a strategy from both Tiny Habits. Some people argue Tiny Habits came up with it. Um, That author, I forgot, J.B. Fogg, I think is his name. Um, And then James Clear goes into habit stacking in Atomic Habits. Um, It doesn't matter which doctor or psychiatrist or PhD person came up with it. One nerd figured it out. Right. We don't know which (laughs) one is one of these nerds. It's really effective. And it's effective for building habits because it builds off of an existing neural network in in your brain. So when you identify a daily action or habit that you already engage in, and then you add a new habit before or after the existing one. So this is not smushing two things together, doing it at the same time. This is saying, I have this habit, like brushing my teeth is a habit. Mm -hmm. So going to bed is not something 
it's not a habit that you have to think about doing. It's something that you do. It's a structure in your life. It's something that you do every day. You you can't get around going to bed. Right. It's like getting, it's almost like brushing your teeth. Or getting dressed getting in the morning. Dressed. These kind of things. That's what I'm talking There's, about. Yes. So that's why it's okay. a little bit different than temptation bundling. So in habit stacking, you're going to take those mundane, everyday, routine things that you do that you don't have to think about it mm-hmm. because it's so routine in your life. And it might be as routine as driving to work, mm-hmm. right? That's a routine. Then you're going to stack something you ought to do either before or after it. It could be with it, um, like the driving to work example. You could, I remember back when I was in education and I was in my own personal fat loss phase, I would listen, I would listen to podcasts on weight loss. So ironic, right? Mm -hmm. I would listen to weight loss podcasts and think I can do better job than these guys. No, I didn't think that. (laughs) I thought, Ooh, that's some great nuggets. That's some gold right there. Oh, they're so right about this or they're so, yeah, I could apply that in my life. And it was super helpful to listen to that to and from work every day because I already had the habit of getting in my car. I had to drive to work, so Mm -hmm. I might as well use that time to move myself forward, move the needle forward on my own education about weight loss. And I did. Uh, And people, people do this all the time in, in totally unrelated ways and don't think about it. Like for me, I drink my coffee in the morning. I look at the weather because I'm an old man. That's what I do. I, I sit on the couch. You are such an old man. And drink my black coffee. But if, if, we had a newspaper delivered to our door. You would sit there with it and oh, read it like, and I would just like, and you would grunt, pop, just pop it like, oh, what are they doing down at City Hall? <laughs> right, you would. Oh, <laughs> uh, and so uh, another example of habit stacking, one that I implemented in early in my own fat loss phase, was the idea that I knew I needed to drink more water, but I wasn't drinking enough water. So this is a crazy, a habit stack that I created for myself was that I would drink no less than 20 ounces of water, sometimes 40 before I allowed myself to have my first cup of coffee. And it was four, it's, it was 40 up until recently. It was, yeah, I think it, it was 40. It moved to 20. It kind of moves back and forth. Now you do AG one. Yeah. In the morning right before you coffee. I do. I still drink water before my coffee. Um, but it was something that I did because Tyler, you know, you know how much I love coffee. It is a luxury to me. It is. I'm, I'm some say the greatest luxury. <laughs> some say the greatest. <laughs> I mean, it is. Yes, I am. The can the, we, can we talk about that for a second? Go if, ahead. If anyone from Nespresso is listening or wants to give us a sponsorship, <laughs> that'd be incredible. We just bought an espresso and it is the most luxurious, amazing yeah. coffee ever. We, but we also have recently cut back on our well, coffee that's why. consumption. We did, yes. We knew that if we were going to move to the Nespresso route, we had to cut back because then, I mean, who can really afford 40 ounces of Nespresso a day? No one. No one can afford that. Well, <laughs> so. my, I don't think my central nervous system was handling the amount of coffee always drinking as it was. So now we're both on eight ounces, period of coffee per day, which, you know, I still really look forward to that amazing. I, I want that cup of, of coffee. Co- I'm looking forward to it right now. And it is eight sixteen in the evening. <laughs> like right. I'm looking forward to it another eleven hours. So so yeah, so coffee is a luxury in our house and it's a luxury to the two of us. And I knew that if I started my day with X amount of water, 20 or 40 ounces of water before I had my coffee, I would be way ahead of the game and I would easily, without a doubt, meet my water goal every day. I think that's if if you're trying to drink water or like trying to drink a certain amount of water a day, I, I think that is like the best little game to hold yourself to because you are almost everybody is itching to drink coffee first thing in the morning. And if you want to force yourself to pound some water, which is good for you anyway, like that's a good habit. It, it worked for me yeah. and I, <laughs> I stuck to it. I didn't, I, I really did. 
And it's, I still drink water prior to drinking my coffee. I did this morning again. And another way of habit stacking, you know, again, it could be something as simple as, okay, well, let's think of a boring routine thing that I do. I go to bed every day. All right, great. Get out a journal. I cannot tell you enough how powerful writing in a journal can be. Write down your thoughts, do a brain dump, um, write down any barriers that you might have encountered that day to fat loss, put down your emotions, write down your feelings, write it all out, and then go ahead and write down some wins that you had that day as well. Don't just focus on negative things, focus on the positive things. What wins did you have that day? This is such a powerful tool to use in your own fat loss journey. And you might actually start to see some patterns emerge when you journal. Another habit stack. Let's say every morning you get up and you're getting dressed for work. And while you're getting dressed for work or right after you get dressed for work, since you're in your closet or around your dresser, you immediately get out your workout clothes. And whether that goes into a bag because you're going to the gym or it goes, you know, on your bed or somewhere that will be very visible to you to be the trigger to put those on when you get home, then do that. Yeah. You know, one thing I used to do way, way back when I think it was when we first moved back to Texas and I would get up and go to the gym in the morning. We used to, we, Remember we belonged to that Y? Yes. I would wear my gym clothes to bed. You did. Because you did. it was just one less thing I had to do in the morning. It was one one tiny little barrier that kept me from, you know, saying no to myself. Because you were already dressed. Because you're already dressed. Because you're like, oh, shit, I'm already dressed. Might as well, like, let's go. And yeah. then it makes it quicker to get out the door. I'm less noisy. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Stuff like that. I love so, it. So I think even stuff like that, it doesn't have to be these amazing things. I think just tearing down these tiny little barriers, um, I think can be really great, can, can lead to bigger success. Right. And research indicates that our brains are more likely to adopt new habits when they're linked to existing routines. And that's because the brain does not have to work as hard to form a new connection And it makes that new habit easier to adopt and maintain. And finally, I do have another example. And I'm not sure if this example would fit in habit stacking or temptation bundling. I'll be the judge. All right. I'll let you be the judge. So this one, if you have a indulgent item that you don't want to give up because it makes you feel restricted... Like, for example, yours might be cheesecake. You're like, I can't imagine the rest of my life without cheesecake. I don't want you to imagine the rest of your life without cheesecake, right? I want you to have cheesecake. I don't want you to tell yourself. That sounds so good right now. I I don't want you to tell yourself you can't have cheesecake for the rest of your life because you're on this diet. No, that's not the case. How about instead we tell ourselves, I will have cheesecake. I'm going to bundle cheesecake with, and then you fill in an event. But the event that you fill in is an event that only happens maybe every two-ish months. So think of an event that happens every two to three months in your life. So it is reoccurring. Something like getting your hair colored, getting your hair cut. Getting an oil change in your car. Um, Any of those things can be, or like maybe even a routine type doctor visit. It doesn't have to be the same doctor visit, but it could be, you know, your eye exam that you, I mean, listen, I'm 49. I'm now in the part of my life where I have to get the routine mammogram, the routine eye exam, the routine, right? So anytime one of those comes up, so that only happens a few times a year, then I know that on those days, great, I'm going to allow myself to have Ben and Jerry's on those days or whatever it is. So that way you can... Cheesecake on those days. But here's what that does is if there is a 
indulgent item and you bundle it with an event that happens and it's going to happen again, then it tells your brain, hey, you're not being restricted from this. You can, you're still going to have cheesecake. It's coming up. Your oil change is coming up. And oddly enough, your husband might wonder why you're so excited to go have your oil changed on your car. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like, why is she driving around the block so much? Like, <laughs> She's trying to put more She must be on the phone or something. Uh, so, so it's, it's, like, it. it's like in Ferris Bueller, like cars just sitting on the driveway in blocks and just got the engine moving. <laughs> Go, right. the wheels are spinning. So, yeah. So bundle something with, you know, every time you get your hair cut, you go get a giant Einstein bagel because that's your thing, right? And you know it's coming up. You know you're not depriving yourself. And you know you're allowing yourself to have it. But you have it bundled with said event. So that's another example. So would you would you consider that, let's round back, would you consider that temptation bundling or would you consider that habit stacking? I think it's closer to temptation bundling. Something you want. It's, it's but it's I mean, also... Because it's like you ought to do. It's kind of a like, hybrid because you're you're doing something that you want to do bundled with something that you you, to you have to do anyway. Correct. Like you have to go get your oil well, change. you don't have you, to get your hair cut and colored, well, but, no, you but, do, but we do. But, okay, I don't have to brush my teeth every day. <laughs> That's true. Tis true. Yeah. So we covered temptation bundling, we covered habit stacking, and just know that by integrating these strategies into your daily routine, you can create lifelong habits that you actually genuinely enjoy. Remember that the key to sustainable weight loss is making your journey enjoyable and rewarding. If it's not enjoyable and rewarding, it's not going to be sustainable. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of transform yourself i hope you found these tips helpful and applicable be sure to subscribe share the podcast with your friends until next time stay healthy stay happy and keep transforming yourself adios